Hi, welcome to New America's Video Vlog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel, and with me today, Senior Quantitative Analyst, Olga Us. Welcome, Olga. How are you? Uh, hello, Jim. I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, recently, uh, we just, Olga hosted an event with Premia on a master class talking about OIS and curve construction. And in many ways, uh, li the LIBOR issues continue to dominate the headlines with the recent uh, transition and takeover uh, by the NYIC of, of LIBOR. But one of the key challenges that have created issues in the marketplace is the divergence between LIBOR and OIS. And, and looking specifically is really around the impact of derivatives valuations. So with that curve construction, while arguably maybe not the most uh, sexy part, uh, if you will, of, uh, of derivatives valuations and trading um, is really kind of come to the forefront. So Olga, it would be really helpful for everyone who's listening is really give us a little bit of a 101, uh, if you will, on curve construction and what are some of the key things individuals need to think about as uh, when it comes to curve construction with OIS. Right. In the, in the world before the financial crisis, even for the construction of a single currency rate curve, we still had to face a few issues, like what, are, what instruments shall we choose between cash, uh, forward rate agreements and swaps, at what time the quotes should be used for the construction of a particular curve, then uh, what is the interpolation method we want to use to have our curve as smooth as possible. But now, with the introduction of the OIS curve, the picture has changed significantly, and now it became, um, well, one level more complex, but this level is present at every stage of building our market data and valuation. So we have to take into account, we have to take into account the multiple curve framework in the construction of almost every market data object. We have to think of it when we build our model and when we build our projected indices for every single asset class. So thinking about this though, where some of the, it gets even more complex, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people have called it dual curve, um, you know, when referring to OIS and LIBOR, is really around the cross-currency issues. And so perhaps you can give us a little bit of information because I've seen some projections where it's not dual curve, it's nine curves, ten curves um, a bit, uh, in terms of building it together. So can you talk a little bit about the, that complexity? Uh, yes. With the, with the rise and spreads between the overnight index swap rate and the library rate, uh, we also see the uh, hugely rise and spreads between the tenors of the same currency, but the tenors of different uh, libraries of different tenors. And we do have to take into account that we have to have a different curve, for example, for US dollar three months and for US dollar, US dollar six months, because it costs uh, more money to borrow, borrow uh, uh, funds for six months rather than for three months. And this extends to all tenors of the libraries that we might use in our valuation. And then moving on from different uh, library tenors, we have to also take into account the OIS discount in the construction of our cross-currency framework. So for example, for the construction of the um, two-currency model, we consider the domestic currency with the domestic OIS curve and library rate, and then we need to construct not only the foreign library rate, but also construct the correct OIS discounting curve for the foreign currency, taking into account that we um, have to bootstrap it using the basis, cross-currency basis swaps and forward rates. So now, uh, as I mentioned at, at the introduction, you just uh, gave a master class um, presentation to uh, the folks in uh, Premier Chapter in London. Um, what were some of the key questions that were coming up from the participants in, these le in your lecture? Well, the questions raised, uh, ranged from very basic questions as to how to build this curve at all. But then uh, those customers, we advised them to contact our sales team uh, to help numerics as one of the solutions. And then uh, more specific questions would be dealing with uh, how the calibration works, uh, what are the inputs and outputs of the calibration with certain algorithms, and how do we take into account the OES and uh, our projection curves at the level of model and indices, and how does it participate in our deal definition? 
So that kind of question surrounding all levels of evaluation process. Well, Olga, I want to thank you so much. And for those who want to uh, uh, view Olga's presentation and lectures um, over uh, at Premier London uh, that were earlier in June of this year, they'll be available uh, over the summer uh, on video uh, uh, on numerics.com for on-demand viewing. Olga, I want to thank you so much for your time today and sharing your thoughts and insights. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll uh, see you on uh, the numerics video blog soon. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you.